Hey Parasites and welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog and I am out she outside where they're filming Venom 2 right now. I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching the Venom Vlog. 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 The seat, my man. My man. Thank you guys so much for being fans of the character that we all love so much. Thanks for watching. I enjoyed the show. We are Venom! Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the finale of the Venom Vlog for Season 4, this is episode 600. We are recording this on November 19th, 2020. It's probably going to air closer to Christmas, so uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to all of you. And with us for our big finale, you know, people have been asking me for a long time now, hey, talk more about the video games. Venom's been in a ton of video games, you got to talk about those. We did Ultimate Spider-Man, we did Maximum Carnage, Separation Anxiety. But we, we haven't got into Web of Shadows, some of the mobile games, some of that stuff. So that's what this episode is. We're going to go through kind of in hopefully less than an hour, but we'll see. Hopefully we get under an hour. I got two guests with me today to help keep me on track and help speed me along. We are going to talk about just kind of the overall history of Venom in video games and kind of our experiences with it. And with me today, I have returning from our recent Parasite podcast, Leith Null. Leith Null, say hey to everyone and let them know where they can find you on social media, sir. Hey, it's Leith Null here. You guys can check me out at Venom underscore Vault or the Venom Vault Facebook group. Thanks for having me. Hey, no problem, man. And I'll put links to uh, Leith Null stuff down below like I did on the Parasite podcast. And then also our other guest here, which is Eddie's Mullet, returning to the show. Eddie, say hello to everyone and let them know where they can find you, sir. Hey, guys. It's uh, Eddie underscore Mullet on Twitter. Or find me in Seek's comments. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's always in the comment section, probably even on this video. Um, and uh, and yes, and thank you again. I always like to say it. Thanks for your service and uh, and what you're doing right now. Uh, he is overseas and still making time to to call into his podcast. So we appreciate that very much, man. Bad duty calls. Thank you. <laughs> All good. So so you know, I want to start with something that is we can kind of make fun of because I, I love poking. I have two. I know two people that work at Screen Rant. And they write articles over there. So anytime I get a chance to throw a punch at them or throw some shade, I always take that chance. And uh, and so Screen Rant recently wrote an article about Venom saying that he's been in 23 video games. Um, but like all Screen Rant articles, uh, it's 100% wrong. Venom's actually been in probably over 40 video games now, at least the suit in some form or some form of Venom. Um, if you count all the mobile stuff, the puzzle stuff, you know, uh, PC only stuff. Uh, Game Boys, like there's so many things he's been in. And so we're not going to be able to go through every single video game that Venom's been in, but we are going to talk about some of our favorites for sure, and then some of the ones we play like the most or put the most time into, and then just some that we just have fond memories of. So um, you guys ready to get started? I'm so excited to talk about this with you guys. Definitely, man. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. All right, sweet. So, like I said, the Venom symbiotes appeared in probably 40-plus games now, if you count, you know, Big Planet, and now recently uh, Venom's going to be in Fortnite, of all things. So there's going to be a, you know, there's there's Venom everywhere. There's plenty of stuff for you to find to have the character. So without us focusing on the main things, I do want to kind of start, though, in the beginning, and this is something that even, it was funny because Eddie loves to email me stuff, like when he starts doing his own research, he loves to send me stuff like, hey, man, guess what I found? Guess what I found? And coincidentally, I was researching at the same time as him. So when he would send me stuff for this, I'm like, yep, I actually just was reading about that. So um, if I'm not mistaken, Eddie, where was the first time, you know, we saw Venom in a video game, uh, at least that uh, to our knowledge, and that is listed as his first appearance? Yeah, in the, uh, the classic Game Boy. Uh, the Amazing Spider-Man for the game for the uh, old uh, NES Game Boy, and that was the uh, late. Was that the late eighties? Uh, no, nineteen ninety. Oh yeah. wow! Right. Okay. So Venom was like a year and a half old and already in a video game. Yeah, somebody over there at Marvel knew he was worth selling. <laughs> nice. I'm pretty and... sure he was the final boss too of that game. Oh, was he? See that I didn't know yeah. actually. That's yeah. cool. Um, what are it's well most kids wouldn't he was at the game I had it actually it was brutally hard <laughs> okay that, that makes boss sense I looked easy though man he's just like hanging up it, and it, upside down from his web and you just got to shoot him a couple times yeah I'm, I'm sure like all, all video because I played a lot of Mega Man on the Game Boy so I'm sure like it's one of those once you get the pattern down 
it's it's uh, it's, it's less stressful but getting the pattern down can sometimes could drive you crazy yeah for sure it, it, the, the road there was actually harder I, I i couldn't probably him as a boss was easy but getting there it's yeah i, I remember as a kid i couldn't do it i haven't played in decades <laughs> did, so you played That's it crazy. um did you play it leaf no have you played that game no not at all i didn't even know it existed until uh we started doing some research <laughs> Uh, yeah, I I knew the game existed, but I didn't know Venom was in it, and I didn't know he was the final boss until I started doing research. So, uh, yeah, uh, Eddie's mullet. I mean, you you are especially in my comment section. Like you're the constant like um, like hey, here's extra information that you you know to to add on to this episode. Like you you are always like a just a dearth of knowledge when it comes to Venom, and uh, and that's why I was like, oh good, he he knows about this game. He played it. He can talk about it because <laughs> I don't know anything about it. I did watch a clip and some of you guys who are listening to this episode, you're probably seeing some of that footage now. Um, so you can see how easy the boss fight is kind of, uh, but again, it's, it's after you learn a pattern of, of how he moves. But, uh, but yeah, I've never played the game still to this day. I never, never, ever played it. And this was my first time seeing footage of it too. Yeah. It's only worth looking at. I would, I don't recommend hunting it down. I, I have no idea what it, if it's even, expensive or not but yeah the true just watch video <laughs> yeah um well let me ask you this so 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 moving on from that game before we get into the next few games uh, like i said on this channel we have covered maximum carnage um you know we've talked about ultimate spider-man and separation anxiety uh, everyone knows my thoughts on those because i said them in those videos so we'll start with um with you leaf Null, and then we'll jump to eddie What's kind of your brief thoughts on those three games? Like, do you have a favorite of those three, or do you like all of them? And and what are some of your favorite things about each of those two games, or each of those three games? All right. Uh, so I guess my first acknowledgement of Venom being in a video game would have been the Maximum Carnage on SNES. Uh, that game had so much hype when it was coming out, and it followed the comic that it hits you in the feels. Probably my favorite one though would have to be Separation Anxiety. Uh, you got to play two-player co-op, and it was just such a blast seeing all the Life Foundation symbiotes. So those two hit me right in the nostalgia nuts, and it's nice. <laughs> nostalgia nuts. I don't want to get hit there, but I, I guess I guess if I was going to get hit, hit in any pair of nuts, that's not a bad one to get hit in. Right on, man. <laughs> what about you, uh, Eddie? I, I, uh, oh, I definitely own, I think I still have my old copy of uh, Maximum Carnage for my Super Nintendo floating around somewhere. Uh, I loved it, and I loved uh, I loved the green jello was in it, because I like the, uh, the the old Three Little Pigs song that they had before and <laughs> before that uh, game even came out. <laughs> um, yeah, I liked it. It was like, I, it was brighter, and the music was good on the on the game. I think, I can't remember if the, S, if the Super Nintendo's audio was better than the genesis version or not but i i, I was a nintendo kid and Same. my friends had the the sega i rented uh, separation anxiety i remember playing it and not enjoying the gameplay like uh i did in um Ma maximum carnage i hmm. i liked the, the the first one gameplay wise way better than but i was still i wish i had separation anxiety now i'm sure i can get an emulator for it or some kind of uh, digital version. That's that's true. Probably it's funny. I remember briefly separation anxiety, but I didn't have a friend to play with, so the co-op thing didn't matter to me. Um, but I bet you that does probably add a ton of fun to that game is having a friend to play with. I just didn't have any friends <laughs> when that a game came. Funny out. note on that though. For like I don't know, six months back, a uh -huh. uh, buddy came over and I popped in the game genie with it. And we beat that game start to finish. <laughs> nice. Oh, Game Genie. It, it was so fun, man. It was it was great. <laughs> nice. Well, you know, both of you guys mentioned so far kind of your first experiences with Venom and video games. You talked about the Game Boy game for, for um, Eddie here. And then, you know, you mentioned uh, Separation Anxiety and and, uh, and Maximum Carnage for, for you, um, uh, Lethnol. But for me, I actually was – I had a Sega CD when it came out. I was one – I was my only – in the, anyone I knew or you know other kids at school that play video games none of them had a Sega CD and I don't know how my mom ended up with one she used to work for a company called MCI which was like a competitor to AT&T 
and uh, and they got run out of business by AT and T pretty quickly. But um, but they would get gifts all the time for like doing good in sales. And she ended up with a Sega CD and brought it home for me. And uh, and I had like Sewer Rats and Sonic CD and all these games. And then she bought me this Spider-Man game because at that point she said I was allowed to read Spider-Man comics again. And in the Sega CD version, there was a, a I think a Sega Genesis version called Spider-Man vs. Kingpin. But then a couple years later, like two years later, they re-released it for Sega CD and they added things to it, including Venom. And so when I played the game, uh, they changed the title to Amazing Spider-Man vs. Kingpin. It had Venom in it, and I just thought Venom was always a part of the game. And then when I did research for this, I found out he was actually only on the Sega CD version. Did you guys, uh, before I get into my thoughts on that, did you guys ever play that game? No, I never did. I had, uh, I, I, like I said, I had, uh, it, it was pretty rare to see people that had a Sega CD. <laughs> I, mean, uh, I knew one person, or, that's it. Right, and... Uh, that might have been a port to the Famicom uh, Lethal Foes game. Okay, all right. That it, uh, it maybe I, there there was a Famicom version that had. And when I looked that up, then that, I'm not well. sure if they're the same ones, but it is quite similar, and I I know what you're talking about, Eddie. Sweet. Oh uh, yeah, I mean I know the Famicom one too, but you were saying Eddie, you were saying that um, the Sega CD version might just be a port of that version. It, it could be. I, I was. I started looking into these games too when we were doing that, and I. I believe someone mentioned that could. That could be totally wrong. So. All right. <laughs> well, me, let us know in the comments, everybody, if if we're uh, if we're off base on that. I mean, yeah, I was trying to do research on that too. In that era, it was hard to find, uh, uh, you know, you know, hundred percent accurate information and stuff. And not a lot of people, right. not a lot of people, like you said, had Sega CD. So like, it's hard too to compare like versions of games because. You know, you can get it from second hand, like, oh, I heard this version had this, but it's like, as far as people who actually played it, you know, it's hard. And even me, like, I have terrible memory, so, like, I don't remember fully the game, but I do remember, like, when I played it, I didn't, I think Venom's on the cover, but I wasn't sure if he'd actually be in the game, too. And I remember playing it going, oh, awesome, Venom's in this. Um, and uh, and it got me excited because I had just recently learned who he was in the comic books uh, through the, um, the, you know, Savage Genesis Carnage story. But uh, but that game was fun. It's like it, it's it's when you go back and watch the footage, which some of you guys are seeing now on screen too, probably. Um, it's very. It looks terrible. It looks like a terrible game uh, c compared to like today's standards. Like if anyone who's like under twenty is watching this, they're gonna be like, "That looks like the worst video game ever." And it's it it wasn't a great game, but you know you could climb up the side of walls and swing and kick people, and that was kind of fun. <laughs> And uh, the Sega CD version, I think, is the first time you actually get to hear Venom or Eddie Brock's voice in a video game, too. Like, clear. Right. You yes. can hear a little bit in the arcade one, but in the, the Sega CD one, he actually talks. Right. And he sounds goofy as hell, but yeah, but yes. Yeah. yeah, you can definitely hear him talking. That's true. Um you gotta throw that in there, man. Yeah, I know. I get. I there is. I we have some footage, so maybe I'll in in between some of the cuts, I'll, I'll put something in there where you can hear him talk. Don't count me out yet, Spider Man. I don't need spider sense to tell me I haven't seen the last of him. Um. So yeah. So. <laughs> So, you know, we talk talking about that game, Amazing Spider-Man vs. Kingpin. Like, yeah, of course, Kingpin's in it, and there's other villains in there, too. Um, but uh, but it was cool because it was Venom, and obviously, like, you know, that's kind of the heart of this show is we and, and all of our passions kind of revolve around Venom. So, you know, going after that and after talking about the first appearances of his stuff, like, for me at least, uh, the I kind of lost track of Venom in video games, although 1995 was a big year for him. He appeared in... Um, you know, Amazing Spider-Man Lethal Foes, the Spider-Man cartoon maker for the PC, Separation Anxiety. So, like, in one year, he had three games. And then the year before that was, in 1994, was Maximum Carnage. So he was, like, really blowing up and, and in a lot of things. And, of course, I played, you know, Maximum Carnage and Separation Anxiety. But then after that, I kind of lost track of him for a couple years. And it wasn't until the late 90s with Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, that I got reintroduced to Venom in video games, and this time in a fighting game. So between like 
95 and Marvel vs. Capcom. Is there any games that stood out to you guys that you'd like to talk about? Or or speaking of Marvel vs. Capcom, do you have a, a story involving your first time playing that game? And we'll, we'll start with, uh, we'll go Eddie first this time. Yeah, I, I played uh, Marvel vs. Capcom a ton. I'm, uh, we had our arcade at the mall by my house, and we'd go up there and just dump quarters into it. My cousins or my friends and I, we'd go up there, and yeah, we'd play all the time. I'd always, I'd always pick Venom <laughs> every time. And, uh, Amen. I'd take him and Spidey, and I think Magneto was really good in that game. Very easy to use. Sure. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's... I, I really remember playing that and uh, and I was mad that the because my cousins had a Sega or some other system that had the earlier version I, and I thought that Venom was going to be in it but he wasn't on the first like the the Marvel Superhero Awards or something the Battle for the Gems but it's a, like the same pretty much gameplay and it stayed pretty true up until I think the newer version like the there's a little different controls that I really I, I just like playing the older versions of them. Yeah, same, definitely. What What about you, Leith? No. Uh, the first time I remember that game was same here, dude. I was at the arcade and Venom just took me by surprise. <laughs> I would always aim to play that game when I was there. <clears throat> I never owned it on any consoles except for the newest installment of it, but it was a blast. We got some of the most iconic, you know, Venom moves from it. Yeah. Now also, I mean, you guys, you, Hyper Venom? Yes. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> the Red Venom? Dude. Yes. Yeah, the that, n- n- not Carnage? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, it was so popular, they even did a Funko Pop based off of that one, specifically the Capcom version. That's right. Blue. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the, it's around that time, I, I, I started getting into fighting games around then, like obviously the Mortal Kombat's. Uh, the Street Fighter games. I'm a huge Capcom fan. I love everything from Street Fighter to Mega Man to Resident Evil. Now Monster Hunter is something new that I've been getting into. Like I, I'm obsessed with Devil May Cry, Onimusha. Like I, I love Capcom stuff. And so at that time they were they did like X Men Children of the Atom fighting game. They did like a Punisher arcade game. Like they they were I was loving Capcom stuff and I loved all their Marvel stuff. So when they evolved from Street Fighter vs X Men up to Marvel vs Capcom. Same thing as you, Eddie. I would. Uh, I left high school. I was the uh, one of. We had like eight kids in our group of friends, and two of us had cars. Me and one other guy, and we would load everybody up in our two cars. And after school, we would go up to the mall and just dump like ten dollars of quarters into this game uh, each. And uh, and then and it was the fun. Good old times. Yeah, it was so good. Like times were simple back then. Um, and it, but it was so fun, and I, I loved playing those. The first. I remember being really excited as a comic fan playing the first one because Onslaught was the villain of the game, like the main boss, and that was a character that Eddie had never met in the comics. Um, I remember when they did the big Onslaught story, for whatever reason, they didn't do an event where Eddie was affected by Onslaught. It wasn't until after Onslaught where Eddie started meeting characters like um, uh, the Zero Tolerance team of uh, Bastion and stuff. So we never, even though New York was overrun by uh, Sentinels, we never saw Venom deal with them. So I was always wondering, what would that be like to see Venom up against Onslaught's army? And this game was like access to that, which I thought was cool. And so I always loved it. I thought this game was great. Uh, I loved the first two, the third one that eventually came out, and then the recent one that came out uh, that brought Venom back into it, which has been great. And then also he uh, Venom kept going into the early 2000s uh, and into the mid-2000s, uh, stayed in fighting games, by en- he ended up in a, a new fighting game called Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects. <laughs> you? You don't have a chance. It is my curse to be alive. Uh, did either of you guys play that game? And, and we'll start with Lethno on this one. Oh, definitely, man. I was looking so forward to that. Uh, the hype was real. It was inside the Game Informer magazine, <laughs> and uh, it just made it look really moody. It had a different color scheme than what uh, fighting games typically have, and the fact that we were getting to see Venom in it, I, I went out and got it the release day. Nice. Uh, they, they, I think they had a comic book series that was a prequel to it. Yep, yep. It was a six-part, possibly. It was, yep. 
Good memory. Um, it was great, man. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I don't have it anymore, but I'll find it again one day. I know. I keep hoping they'll re-release that game. Um, but uh, what about you, Eddie? Did you get into uh, Rise of the Imperfects? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I vaguely, I vaguely remember playing it. Um, I remember the the odd characters that they had created specifically for that game that. I'm not sure if they've appeared again since, but uh, the one thing I remember about that game, though, is that my cousins and I would play it. I think they got the fighting games. I liked fighting games. I would never sit and play with them like I'd do like a platformer or an RPG, but I remember specifically we would take Electra and pick up cards with it and just laugh hysterically at it. <laughs> 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 yeah, you yeah. Can, like interact with the environment. And it was just hysterical seeing tiny electric picking up cars. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that was the whole thing of that game was that all of the characters. I mean, there was new characters they added that were kind of like had enhancements, like regular humans that were enhanced, and then also throughout the storyline, the other characters like Electra and stuff get slightly enhanced too. But you're right. It's it it didn't show visually. So when it just sees Electra picking up a car, you're like. Well, if her eyes were glowing red or if she was like her skin was glowing, like it would make more sense, but they didn't do that. So you're right. It's just, you're just like, what the hell's happening here? <laughs> um, it was like a new style of fighter, right, too? It was like a new style of fighting game. Yes. Yeah. It was, it was trying to yeah, be... Yeah, just done different. Yeah, they tried to be more like, I think like Tekken where it was more combo based or something. Like uh, it was, it was a slightly different style for what we knew coming off the Marvel vs. Capcom games. For, for sure. Um, I love I love that game because all the character designs and all the artwork were all based off of Jay Lee, uh, who I'm a huge fan of and I was back then too. And Jay Lee had designed the entire game uh, from character standpoint, uh, character design. So they built the game around his vision almost, um, which I thought was really unique that they were doing that. And Jay was kind of on the rise as, a, as an artist and doing a lot of covers for Marvel and DC at the time. And... Uh, and I liked his style. I've always been a big fan of his style. So I love what he brought to the table. I even went to Comic-Con that year when the game came out. And they had Jay Lee sit at the video game booth every day for uh, for one hour in the morning and one hour in the evening. And the first like 15 people that could get in line, they capped the line off after that. You would get a free sketch from him. Um, and so, so I went in line every day at, for the morning one. And so I ended up getting four sketches from him. Uh, I, ironically enough, I didn't get a Venom. I, I didn't ask for Venom. Oh, no. I know. I'm terrible. But oh, I, I, I loved his Inhumans run, so I had him draw four members of the Inhumans for me. Do yeah. you have those still? Do oh, still yeah. Have they're, still, they're still around Sweet. here somewhere. Oh, yeah, definitely. Dude, you got to take a pick of them, man. I, I, I will. I got to find them. But, yeah, they're around here somewhere. They got to be. Um, Sweet. And, uh, and so, but uh, real quickly before we move on to the next one, the, I will say this little Easter egg. I've said it on my show before, but I'm such a Capcom nut. Like in Marvel vs. Capcom, Venom has a move called the Venom Fang, um, where he like extends his arm and this like spirally snake comes up out of the ground and, uh, and tries to get you. And it's like Venom Fang, Venom Fang. So if you play Resident Evil 5, uh, you can actually find a piece of treasure in the game that is a spirally snake and it's called the Venom Fang. That's awesome. <laughs> that was what made that game really good, though. All the little catchphrases, like Wolverine's Berserker Barrage. You just make the guy, you can make him spam it over and over and over and just say it. And <laughs> that, that was part of the fun of the game. Yeah, it's true. Like, Maximum Spider. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet Shield, too. Like, I don't think I've ever seen the Venom Shield in a comic book. Have you guys? Uh, Is it? it? Yeah, Venom, uh, Venom the Mace. <sighs> Venom the Mace did it the Mace. first time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, he did a big giant shield in Venom the Mace, which was, a ye I think, a year before or two years before the video game came out. So I, I, I don't know which inspired what or if it was just coincidence. But, uh, but yeah, he when he makes the shield too, half of his human body is showing, just like in the video game. It happens the same in the comic too. Sweet. Now, I'm kind of curious if because in that game he does, he kind of like goes into that big puddle mode that, that goes forward and uh, you see like he's jumping with the teeth and you don't, I don't know if you ever seen him do that in the comics before. Yeah. No, that I don't think so. Yeah, no, the big giant uh, shark bite thing. Right. Yeah, no. 
that'll yep. lead into something further down the line. There you go. Well, <laughs> Don, talk about. Donnie Cates will do it, and he'll say it's the first time it ever happened. So. <laughs> we will. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, Venom looks so good, though, in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. It looks so stellar. God. Yeah. Oh, in 3? Is Venom in the third one? Uh, Infinity. I, I think oh, yeah. That's one that oh, I yeah, yeah. Infinity. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Infinity. Yeah. Um, yeah, he looks amazing. I, it's funny because I own that game and I only own one bonus character and it's Venom. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's so, so sweet. His alt skin for that game is anti Venom, too, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yep. That, which is really cool. Um, game over. <laughs> And so, so from there, you know, Venom started to pull away from fighting games for a little while, and but in between Marvel vs. Capcom games, um, and they started getting into like RPG style stuff and like dungeon crawler type stuff, um, and team MMO stuff, which is the Ultimate Alliance games. And I, I've played the first two, and I love them. I haven't played the new one yet, and I know Venom's in the new one. What are your guys' experiences with the Ultimate Alliance franchise? And uh, and I definitely want to start with um, Eddie on this one, and then we'll jump over to you, Ethan. Uh, I uh, love the first two, and I think didn't I think it unlocked Venom, and I remember just uh, having to go and do the task so I could get them unlocked, and and I my mom so I, I didn't review that that game go back going back and look through it like some of the other ones, but uh, I I absolutely I remember going through that series. I did get the new one and started playing it. I it, it doesn't play the same though. Uh. Um, it it, uh, it just it, something about it just feels different than from the first two. I think I could go pick up the one, the first, either the first two and play them and still enjoy it. But the new one, I don't know, just something about it. It kind of feels like it's it's pushing you in directions and forcing you to use team ups and stuff. And I and maybe I just grew out of the, the genre. I don't know. But yeah, the first two I absolutely loved. And it was neat how you could use different team ups and different uh, characters together would do different, give them different perks. Right. Yeah, like that was one of the first times uh, in something other than a comic book I saw Captain America deflect um, a, a, a repulsor blast off of his shield from Iron Man. Um, like that That game was really good about teaming people up and stuff. And also the second game was kind of our first, uh, our first time we got to play as Matt Gargan Venom. First and only time, I think, um, in a video game. Yeah, that was a bitter pill. <laughs> yeah, I know. Not everyone's a fan, but uh, but Lethno, what, what, what's your kind of your window into the Ultimate Alliance world? I remember when they dropped it, and I was pretty geeked for it. You know, a super hero team up game. But I'm not a fan of top down view games like that. Okay. So I tried it. I think they had a demo for it when they used to do a lot of demos on the 360, mm-hmm. and I gave it a chance. It just didn't click with me that deep. But it was awesome Venom's in it, no doubt. Just, that, I, I'm not a fan of that game style. This this isn't Venom related, but what sold me on that game is the year at Comic-Con when they released the trailer. Because I've, I've been going to Comic-Con since like 2003, back before like back when you could actually buy your ticket a week before the show started. Um, and uh, which does not happen anymore. And I remember that year we went to Comic Con, and they had um, they showed the trailer for the game, and the trailer had uh, it was the opening cinematic, and you have all these uh, I think Ultron bots fighting the Avengers on a helicarrier, and then Spider Man shows up, and then Wolverine shows up, and the way Wolverine shows up, it's great because you just see this ship with like you know Ultrons on it, like coming towards a helicarrier to like you know as backup to wipe out the uh, the heroes, and then you just see them getting cut apart. And then all of a sudden you hear Wolverine laughing and the the, sh- the ship crashes and Wolverine crashes with it and he's laughing the whole way down. And then uh, and then Spider-Man turns to Captain America and goes, I do not like teaming up with that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, or he says I'm like, or that guy, awesome. yeah, he's like, that guy scares me or something like that. And I was like, God, that's so good. <laughs> Aside from like fighting games, I really don't remember a game before that where you could be all those villains too. That was one of the appeals of that that game to me when it first came out because you could be all kinds. Of, there's like tons of characters in that that you never got to actually control in a game before that game came out. The first Ultimate Alliance came out. Yeah, that's true. Because well, before the two Ultimate Alliance games, they did two X Men Alliance games, 
um, or they were called X Men Legends, and uh, and so and I loved both of those. So I was ready when they did the Marvel one. I was like, oh, this is gonna be so good because, like you said, they're gonna add all these characters that you've never got to play as in a video game before, and you could have them team up with the heroes, which was really cool. Or you can make a whole team of villains. I mean, it was just a blast to play those games. Um, but then, you know, obviously from there, we get into 2007 era when Spider-Man, or Venom makes his big screen debut in Spider-Man 3. And then, of course, they make a Spider-Man 3 tie-in game. And they have Topher Grace, even, who, uh, you know, lends his voice as Venom and Eddie Brock in the video game. Or at least Eddie Brock. I don't know about Venom. But, um, you know, did you guys, do you remember playing that game? And, uh, you know, do you have any thoughts on Spider-Man 3 or the Spider-Man 3 game? I'll start with Lethal Null this time. I do remember playing it because the movie hype was awesome. Uh, I can't remember. That wasn't like the first big open free roaming Spider-Man game, was it? It was somewhere around there. Yeah. Right, it was one of the movies I thought that actually like, you know, reinvented the wheel. I think two was the reinventor and three just built off of two. Okay. So I do remember, I don't, I, I do remember it, but I just don't think I liked Venom that much in it. His, <laughs> His lines weren't that good. He uh, he didn't come off as a really good villain, and the way he was trying to team up with Sandman, it just he he was. I wasn't feeling it. <laughs> That's fair enough. What about you, Eddie? I remember that. What I remember most about that game is it not being as good as two. <laughs> and I don't. I remember not like. You know, not you know, aside from the number, the second movie being better, the, the second game was way better, and and I don't, I think it, three was even like worse. Like you couldn't even do as much in the free roaming area. It, that's that's all I remember about is just being disappointed from the, yes. the game and the movie. <laughs> um, yeah, same with me. I'm I'm actually more on the lethal side here. I don't really remember that game too much. I do remember it wasn't as good as two. That two was awesome, um, and it matched almost the awesomeness of the second movie too. Uh, but the third one, I remember just being like, meh, I guess. And I guess Venom's in it. But uh, but now I just remembered. I kind of skipped an era of video games, and I want to backtrack because you you met you just reminded me, lethal. You said the Eddie had very bad lines in this game. But there's actually a oh, game. Yeah. There's actually a game where Venom has really terrible lines, and uh, and that is a game that I know Eddie's mullet loves. So Eddie, why don't you tell us a little bit about that PlayStation One Spider-Man game that came out? I think in two thousand. Uh, the the uh, the friends and foes one. That one. No, no, no. Like the the, the PlayStation One one where it was like Spider-Man and Venom, and Venom has all those really cheesy lines of dialogue in it. Sir, sir, I didn't have a. I didn't have a PlayStation. Oh, what? Oh. Le- oh I had ma- a GameCube. Le- Final Fantasy. Uh, Le- Lethnal. Lethnal. No. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Oh, I definitely know, yes. All right. Tell, t- uh, tell us a little bit about it. Oh, we're bad? I'm going to kill you. Parker! Just get me out of here now! Bummer. You're in the doghouse now, dude. Coming, honey. All right, I'll give you what I can remember. Uh, Venom had more of a light blue coloring to him. Yeah. He wasn't the normal black. Uh, there was actually, what, I think there was a version made for the PC as well that it had way better character models. Right. But it had a real Mark Bagley eyes. You could tell on the PC version. The uh, PlayStation version was dumbed down. And Venom was hilarious. It was like the most devilish I think I've ever heard him be in a video game. It was very, very reminiscent to uh, like a Todd McFarlane Venom. You know, he just wanted to be sinister. He's like Spider Wuss, and uh, he would be <laughs> mocking people when they're drowning. And it, was, it was just hilarious. But I think uh, about halfway through the game, you would you ended up teaming up with Venom, right, and taking down the bad guy at the end. And uh, what I found out about this too was the voice actor for Venom is also John Jameson from the Spectacular Spider-Man cartoon. Awesome! Awesome. Yeah, so it, it was. It, it's a memorable one, mainly just because of Venom's lines. <laughs> the yeah. gameplay was so-so. <laughs> so we're partners, but only for now. After we bust those tech thieves, it's payback time for kidnapping my wife. Jeez, uh, one little mistake. We said we're sorry. Yeah, whatever. Now, the imposter was a shapeshifter. So that means it was either Mysterio or the Chameleon. Hey, Chameleon was our idea. We thought of that. Tell me this, Einstein. 
Who could have wanted to steal Octavius' technology? Oh, oh, we know, we know! Who? The Submariner. Submariner? Get serious, will you? The Mighty Thor! Are you out of your mind? Don't answer that. Uh, Galactus! Forget it, Eddie. When I when I upload this episode... I never said the title. <laughs> it's just Spider-Man. It's just Spider-Man, yeah. yeah. Spider-Man 2000. Spider-Man 2000. So, you know... Well, no, I know what game it is. You, you, I know what you're talking about now. I actually watched a gameplay of it, and it is bad. The, <laughs> the Mary, where he captures Mary Jane, yes. the, the model, and like yeah. and he's got a Venom like live stream going on. Yes. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say if you didn't remember, I'll have the footage pop up, and and uh, that'll refresh your yeah. memory. But it's um, yeah, it's it's so bad, and that was I remember I kind of remember that one because that was PS1 era, and uh, that was before we got into the. The movie ones that started popping up on PS2, um, but yeah, that was. And then I think From they made I a. Saw. I think they made a sequel called Enter Electro or something like that too, or something. I can't remember. I think Black Cat is terrifying looking in that game. The, <laughs> the images. If you, if you have a picture of her, you got to look it up. It, it, it is horrifying. <laughs> if I'll, I'll put I'll put the image up on screen, you guys can all vomit while you're watching this episode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also, another remark on that Spider-Man 2000, we got to see a, a Carnage symbiote possessed Doc Ock. Yes. In it. So yeah. That, that was really cool to see too. That's right. We so got Carnage. Yeah. D- Dark Ock. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can rhyme some words with that. Well, he a, a, well a version of Dark Ock. <laughs> if you say it really fast, it's crazy. Um, so. Uh, yeah, there's actually a, a, a venomized Dr. Octopus showed up in the recent Donny Cates book, Venom Beyond, actually. Um, oh, yeah, that's shocking. Yeah, for, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, but, 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 Eddie, since you mentioned it, because I, I do have oh, – I won't take too long, but I will say I have a deep, stupid love for Spider-Man friend or foe because I remember when they – so after Spider-Man 2 and I think Sp- going into Spider-Man 3 – People were expecting open world Spider-Man games from now on. So when they released the trailer for Friend or Foe, I, for for example, was like, hey, this looks awesome. It's like a platforming buddy team up where you can play with a friend and you can run around and play all these different Spider-Man characters that we never got in games before, like the Prowler, who I'm a huge fan of, Hobie Brown. So when I saw him in the trailer and I was like, oh my God, you can have Prowler and Venom team up in a game and fight Dr. Octopus. I'm like, this is going to be so awesome. And... Uh, and then when the game came out, everybody panned the shit out of that game. And uh, they were like, it's not open world. It's st- it's stupid. It's made for kids and blah, 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 whatever. But at that time, I was so happy just to have two of my favorite characters in the game that I just didn't care. I was, I, I was one of those where I gave it a pass because it was just mindless fun to play. Almost like the Green Lantern movie game that came out, Rise of the Manhunters. It reminded me a lot of that, and uh, which obviously that came out later, but... I, so friend or foe, if you haven't checked it out, obviously I'll have some footage on screen here, but it's a mindlessly fun, dumb game, and I wish they would just re-release it for 20 bucks. I would buy it and play it again. It was that fun, but I think it might have been Activision or something else, and they may not have the rights or they can't re-release it anymore, but it, it it's it's mindless fun. So have either of you guys played the game? We'll, we'll, I'll start with whoever, whoever played it, just jump in. Yeah, I did. I, I've completely forgot about it until you'd sent some notes over and i looked it up and i was like oh i i absolutely love that game oh um, awesome it nice because for the same reasons like for it's it's a straightforward game you don't need to run around and you know have to do stupid tasks out in the open world it's it's just it, whatever in the mood for right but yeah the the best the team-ups and the like they got like little cinematic cuts between the team-ups and that it's really fun uh Thing that annoyed me the most is that probably doesn't have his cape on for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> it always bugged me. Yeah, it's and it, it the, the game is told in like a alternate version of the Raimi universe because like Harry is the the new goblin, the snowboarding goblin from the movie in it, and you know Venom's still alive, but that's yeah they're all they like, controlled by some kind of symbiote bad guy. I forget at the end it's a some symbiote thing with like. I have Agamotto's on it. They're possessing all the, the <laughs> heroes. That's right. Um, yeah, that's right. It did have like this weird, random symbiote-themed villain. Um, 
which was cool because because uh, Marvel's Capcom they had Abyss, which I think is a Capcom character, but they made his final form look kind of like a giant carnage dog, which I thought was cool. Um, so yeah, this game was fun. Lethal, did you ever get a chance to check out Friend or Foe? I remember when it was coming out. Uh, it didn't appeal to me a heck of a lot. I I don't know if it was the vibe it was giving off. It kind of made it seem more uh, for a little bit younger audience, but. If I would have known Venom was in it, I, I probably would have jumped on it. <laughs> there was a couple facts that I looked up that I'm are there. Uh, Carnage appears in the PSP version after you beat the game. You can play him as a playable character. Oh, in and, Friend or Foe? Uh, Spider-Man oh. dons the black suit for the final mission. Yes, I, I kind of remember that. But yeah, so I remember the PSP one because... Uh, he was an exclusive. That was because at that time they were, Sony was really trying to push sales on the PSP, and they were trying to add exclusives to the games that got ported over to it. And I remember that being the big selling point for the the handheld. They were like, "Hey, if you get it for PSP, you're gonna get." And I think, I think uh, I want to say another system had another exclusive too. I can't remember, but um, but that's cool. So yeah, I forgot about Carnage. That's really great. I think that's how the game ended, though, is with you giving, like, all the shards to uh, Agent Fury, because I, I watched some gameplay, mm. and he's like, we're going to catalog this way as Project Carnage. Yes. Yeah, and then that was, like, the end of the game. Too. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, well, so this next part, I'm going to let kind of, um, you know, our friend uh, Lethno here kind of take this, because as we get into, like, you know, the late 2000s, a, a Venom game came out that everyone, I think I had, this is probably the most requested game to talk about besides the three I already did talk about, which is Spider-Man Web of Shadows, which is a really great game. Uh, I think it was the first time that they took the aerial combat to a whole new level, and it had a storyline in it that was pretty much an invasion for symbiotes, but it did, it did take things to a whole new direction for Spider-Man games moving forward. Um, because obviously we had other Spider-Man games like Shattered Dimension and all these other things. Like Spider-Man had a black costume and, and one of them. And, and it, they had stuff like that. But this but those were more linear type games. This was um, open world, kind of like a Grand Theft Auto. And it had a lot of awesome features to it and villains in it. So I want Lethnol to take over because this is the game he is definitely most excited for and then me and eddie can jump in with our thoughts at the after he talks so take it away lethal all right spider-man web of shadows there was three versions for this game when it released one on the psp and playstation 2 called the amazing allies edition one on the nintendo ds that was a 2d side-scrolling brawler and my famous famous one is the one on the xbox 360 it was a complete symbiote infused venomized story with a lot of familiar faces. Uh, it had multiple endings to where your choices mattered, and probably the best combat system a Spider-Man game has ever had, in, in my opinion. Do you guys remember uh, any of the commercials for this game or Maximum Carnage? They really left you, like, dredging watching those commercials. Yeah, I mean, I remembered the... Um, well, I just remember briefly the, the Web of Shadows one because it had Moonlight Sonata, which is a song they play in Resident Evil 1, so that's why I remember it so well. Oh, nice. I didn't remember that, dude. Nice. Yeah, it really created, like, a looming sense. And same with the Maximum Carnage trailer. That Those two games, like, yeah. They gave me the chills watching the trailers. <laughs> nice. Yeah, for sure. But uh, one of the best things about this game was the ending. You got to see a giant five-headed Venom that was about the size of Godzilla. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. It had probably one of Eddie Brock's most redeeming scenes he uh he redeemed himself as a man and destroyed the symbiote invasion it was priceless and if i had to say this game is a pinnacle for what we have had so far as from symbiote games and i just hope that everybody said the chance to play it did you ever play it eddie did you play web of shadows i i did uh i just remember it just it looks great and i'm I'm not sure how it if I went back and played it, but I remember at the time it like it, everything like the cutscenes look good and aside from like a few characters, I really don't remember any more any venomized characters before this game either. Right? That's the same here. And I think you said it before, Seek. This was like the first time they started taking the venomized approach. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think we did mention that in an episode because 
Planet of the Symbiotes, when that happened, it didn't have like symbiotes inhabiting like, you know, the, the, the Marvel heroes or villains. It was just symbiotes coming and attacking without hosts. And uh, and so this or were like or they were already bonded to like some alien beings. But this was like the first time where we saw like a Wolverine venom um, and a Luke Cage venom and uh, and I think Vulture and a bunch of other characters. So Electro. Yeah. Black it, Cat. Black Cat looked. Yeah pretty dang good yeah she was I think they called them simio versions they didn't even reference them as venomized right yeah no yeah it was uh the early days before the before branding was better <laughs> um but yeah i know we dogged <laughs> on black combat. cat the combat's great i mean and they the aerial combat is something that's stellar too because that vulture fight was one of the it was so awesome dude that's one of the most memorable boss fights i ever have is that vulture fight <laughs> i mean they made you fine-tune your skills and it felt just wonderful to master that pedigree of a fight. It was so awesome. Yeah, like when you think of a, like an a an X and Y axis like a battle scheme, like when you're playing video games, the cool thing about this one was that you could literally on an you know X axis like fighting on the ground, you'd be punching a symbiote, and then you turn and lock onto something in the air, and you would zip up to it and punch that next, and then you could zip over to something that's clinging to the side of a building and kick it off the building and then zip back down to the first guy and punch him and you could just bounce around like it like like spider-man would and i just thought that added so much to the game i mean it was it yeah it was vertical combat like yeah. that was the first time you could actually beat ass on the side of a building <laughs> yeah <laughs> Seriously. and who doesn't love beating ass just as equally as you could on the ground you could do it on the side of a building yeah you know, it was that fluid yeah you're right um Absolutely, and uh, and because of that, it it stands out, and that's why I think it's after I talked about Ultimate Spider-Man and some of the other ones, that is the game that everyone's like, dude, you got to do a whole episode on it. I'm like, well, unfortunately, my memory of it isn't that good, but that's why it's great to have you guys here, and and I know you have a deep passion for this game, and uh, and I love hearing your your kind of your thoughts on it because even off, pan, you know, off camera and stuff, not recording. You love talking about this game, and uh, and is there any memorable moments besides the ending, like anything throughout the game that you uh, loved? Yeah, uh, I guess when you are wearing the black suit for the first time and you come across Wolverine, mm -hmm. he he puts you through like a field sobriety of test, a wall of Spider-Man trivia, and you uh, got to ask answer these questions appropriately. And one of the questions was, where did you first come in contact with the black suit? And it. The answer was Battleworld from Secret Wars number eight. Right. That was fantastic. The amount of callbacks they were doing in this game. Absolutely. And uh, Eddie, um, did, did you have a favorite moment from this game as well? <laughs> well, well, I remember uh, one of my favorite things is like the the minions in the game. The way that they have a move, they kind of like move like a, almost like I guess like a like a zombie would or something. That it's, I just aesthetically the game looked really really good and i remember enjoying the gameplay and this eventually led to shattered dimensions too didn't it was this the predecessor of that game yes yeah, yeah. they both the, they, if, if you played that one then you would definitely like this one and vice versa they're both really good yeah because well shattered dimension it was it had kind of fluid combat but it was it was a very linear game it wasn't open world for the most part and then i think right. I th it had open world ish levels, like you can swing around in, but it was a level, and you c it didn't go from one area to the next. And same with um, the other one; it was like something in time, uh, and that was like the sequel to Shattered Dimension. I think Dan Slott Edge might, of Time, Edge of Time, yeah. And I think Dan Slott wrote both of them, and I think that was just them trying as a branding tool to see if people would be interested in spider-man 2099 and you know other versions of spider-man and those kind of introduced more of a multiverse thing but um with madam webb but yeah this game was it was a precursor i would say in a lot of ways to what we have nowadays uh i think yes. without shadow without web of shadows i don't think we'd have the current insomniac games in my opinion to right, an right yeah yeah to an extent i mean i think it it made such a so solid foundation that those guys were like well, we got to do what they did and try to top it if we can. You know, it's like it, it set a very high bar for Spider-Man games. It, to me, it's the best symbiote video game that's been out that we've had so far. Yeah, I, I might agree with you on that one, actually. I, um, and like you said, nothing's cooler than a, like, a multi-headed symbiote like dog. Venom's design in it. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh it yeah. Was, that was my one. My one thing I didn't like the spider on him it bugged me. Because it was furry. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Just almost, almost like, like the classic <laughs> Lee Price, almost. Yeah, a little bit. In a in a small way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but that's pretty cool. Like so, so Leith, no, any final thoughts on on Web of Shadows? Obviously, like I agree with you. If anyone out there hasn't played it, if you're able to find like an Xbox 360 or you still have one and you have a a cop, you can find a copy online. It's worth it. Like buy it and play it. It's so much fun. Yep, hands down, best one out there. It it reinvented the wheel on this game. <laughs> nice. Um, Awesome. And so obviously from there, like, uh, you know, that we have, there's been PC only Spider-Man games, Lego games. I know Venom has appeared a couple of times in Lego uh, versions. There was even like a, a Lego fusion of Carnage and Venom called Carnum, I think. Um, (laughs) It's so terrible. (laughs) It's so terrible, but it's Lego. So it's like, it's stupid, cutesy fun, obviously. But, um, and then we even had, like, for the Venom movie, there was that little mobile PC game you could play called Venom Unleashed, where you just scrolled side to side, avoiding, you know, cars and stuff. Um, but uh, but speaking of mobile games, you know, like, lately, in the past, you know, six years or so, there's been a huge boom of mobile games, uh, because obviously they're easier to monetize and, and you know, uh, get people to spend money on, so you can give the game away, essentially for free, to start it. And you can certainly spend all your time grinding to earn things, but for the most part, people get impatient and they're just like, hey, I would like to, you know, get a new suit of a character or I would like to, you know, uh, get this ability or that or, you know, unlock this. So they have these things you can buy in games. And so that kind of has taken over the past few years. And some of those games we've had like Marvel Strike Force, I think was a recent one, Contest of Champions. We had the Spider-Man Unlimited game, which I used to play, where you're just kind of running and jumping as Spider-Man and trying to dodge obstacles. And you can unlock a bunch of different costumes and characters that way too. But the big one that I want to talk about, and I'm going to have Eddie Mullet take over on this one, which is Marvel Future Fight, because this is a game that Eddie got me into. But it's a game he's been playing now for six years or so, I think he said. So Eddie, tell us a little bit about Marvel Future Fight and tell us about... You know, kind of your journey uh, with Venom as your character, uh, as someone you play as a lot, and then the recent boom of symbiotes in the game that has allowed you to take the character to the biggest, highest level, which is Tier 3. Um, tell us a little bit about that, man. Yeah, the uh, feature fight, uh, I remember years ago of seeing it um, in the App Store. Board, and I was like, oh, sweet. I'd click it and download it. I downloaded like the first month that uh it launched i think it was march or april of 2015 and uh started playing it i was like, oh good i get because venom was on it i was into it and playing it and lo and behold venom was quite terrible even <laughs> in the game's infancy <laughs> um but yeah it's a it's it's a mobile game but it, it's pretty expansive a lot of different uh versions multiplayer uh pvp you know you join alliances and it's got its ups and downs it it's it's a nice the, the reason i like it is because it's got features that you can auto and run and then it also it has challenging uh modes like uh like world boss and that and they just introduce null into it mm-hmm. in the, the newest game mode but just a little disclosure for if you want to get it for no, you're not going to get it right away because uh, <laughs> since the game has been out for six years, the downside for new players is that you're going to have to grind uh, quite a ways up before you can unlock certain content. But on the plus side for Future Fight, they are very generous to new players. They're constantly trying to give incentives to pick up new players and returning players if you used to play it. So there's all kinds of incentives. Um, to either start or come back, you know, if you have, if you've been away for a while, um, it, for the longest time, the the symbiotes were like by far the worst characters. Uh, Carnage, in fact, was the first uh, paywall character. Mm. That the nice thing about Future Fight is that there isn't a lot of gotcha mechanics in it, <laughs> which they're kind of trying to get into but i'm not going to dig into that <laughs> uh but carnage is the first character you had to pay a subscription to get uh i think now it's it's either up to eight or nine bucks a month to get uh, one of the 
it can, I guess, uh, pay walls. But, but um, it's really straightforward whether you want a character or not. If you want to invest money, you don't. You can completely, be, you know, play it free. But uh, yeah, for a while, like the game goes in waves. It, you know, it's you're constantly trying to keep up as they introduce new characters. It's better, you know, it's like a rat race. You're never, you're never quite catching the the cheese, but the game you know i've been playing it for almost six years and i enjoyed keeping up with it and i i have uh paid to play the game but uh it doesn't mean it's not enjoyable without it um so for years you know the community been begging from begging and begging for us to need update myself included <laughs> and uh they finally just dropped uh like an absolute carnage themed event where they got you know null now uh, they, Miles Morales has his ultimate uh, absolute carnage uniform, and uh, they did Gwenum, and and they also finally gave uh, Venom a decent uniform. Yes. He had a couple in the past, but uh, now he's got that rune, the rune suit. It's, it it plays great. He's actually usable as a character again, and uh, you can take him to tier three, which is like the the highest you can go in the game. Uh, that's that's a skinny of it uh oh it did and carnage carnage finally got an awesome uniform too because he had been pitiful since he for years as well yeah <laughs> and yeah it, he's he him and venom are two of the best to use in the game now finally yeah we have um because they they also had as far as symbiotes go you can also get black suit spider-man in there um you can get um red hulk with the symbiote oh, yeah, and you can get Scream. Yeah, you can get Scream and you can get Red Circle Hulk. Four and uh, yeah. Flash, yeah. Yeah, and Flash, Flash Thompson, Agent team. Venom. Yep, yep. And you can get Agent Anti-Venom, yeah. which is who I play as. Um, so, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of upgrades. And, yeah, Venom has an Anti-Venom suit, too. And, uh, yeah, Carnage has got his absolute Carnage, Dark Carnage suit. And it's been fun. I mean, Miles. Yeah, yeah, Miles. I love the Miles suit because it's, it's not the action figure one from the an- animated show. It's the one from the comics which has he has, like, six oh. arms. Yeah, which is way better. Yeah, it looks, I love it. Looks really it's yes. so cool. Um, at least, no, have you have you dipped into this game at all? Have you ever checked it out? Dude, I've been so close for the past couple of weeks with all these new drops. Mm-hmm. I want to. I actually did download it, and uh, I just started realizing that I, like Eddie said, I would have to grind so much, mm-hmm. and I, I just can't do it personally, but... Eddie, is there a way that I could just buy my way up to your tier? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. Yeah, that's uh. Did, did did you get a stimulus check that we don't know about? <laughs> no, is it that pricey or something? <laughs> well, uh, no. It, but playing it for so long, you know, you learn how to keep up and how to do certain things and how to maximize, you know, your time and effort in the game as opposed to being brand new. And you know, and, ha- and having to kind of fill your way through the dark. There's a lot of YouTubers out there that do uh, that that cover the game very well. Um, so, <clears throat> with any mobile game, I highly, highly recommend you don't start paying right away, and you get on to YouTube and find a YouTuber that covers the game. <laughs> and just very nice. Know what you're getting into. Yeah, I think Eddie's Mole got me into the game about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago. I can't remember. And um, I think the first three months I played for free because I was just playing the campaign. And then I, occasionally I would do some of the online battles just to like get some extra ISOs or you know other things like that. Um, but I was mainly just playing any games or versions of them that had the stories and uh, without paying any money. But I think after I paid played for three three months or so. Then I started getting into okay, well, I want Carnage, but I can't get him because you have to you have to pay ten dollars for. So every every day for thirty days, you get these the twenty biometrics, which are like how do you level up characters, and you they give you twenty a day, and so you just build those up, and that allows you to buy characters, and uh, and in those characters that you can only buy through biometrics that way, Carnage is one of them. So I was like, well, if, if I have Venom on a team, I want Carnage there too. And I want um, either Black Suit Spider-Man or Agent Venom because at that time there was only those three options. Now I have three teams of three symbiotes, so I have nine symbiotes total in the game, um, and oh, I love I love it. It's it's great. But he's right. It's uh, if you start playing it, 
don't get into it f- you know trying to seek out those paywall characters and that kind of stuff like just have fun with it and if you still like it after a couple months of not paying for it then you'll by then you'll know the game well enough to know where to direct your money to where you're not just throwing a ton of money at it uh, for no reason all right i'm gonna have to get with you guys after this show man <laughs> <laughs> yeah and um, is it possible to get every one of the symbiotes right now like if if i wanted to or are there some that are yeah, yeah, no you can yeah. that because when you start off they give you a free uh a, like a premium character which is like a paywall they give you one free and you yeah. can take you can pick carnage as your one oh, that you want to eat yeah very nice um thank you yeah um and then after that like the other characters you can you'll earn them throughout you know th- through your playing and stuff so um and i think you have to use like the shop items in the shop to upgrade miles and gwen but sometimes you win biometrics or just by logging in every day you can get biometrics and you can hand them to gwen or or uh, miles and level them up too so uh and spider-man i leveled them up just by playing the the campaign pretty much um so yeah and it's got it's got its own uh, contained story too so and and it, like uh there's characters that have they actually began in the game and have made it into the comics uh, that luna snow and Crescent and Io first debuted in the game and before they went into the comics. That's which right. Which is kind of weird. Yeah, huh. that's right. Yeah, so they, they started some new Marvel characters in those games. Um, so yeah, if you're out there and you want to check it out, Venom's the easiest character to get because uh, uh, him and Spider-Man because I think they kind of defaultly give you Spider-Man in uh, playing the campaign. But the uh, Venom one, if you go to Dimension Battles... Um, you can just after you beat a couple dimension battles, you can just hit clear, and uh, and it'll clear by ten. So basically, it'll automatically go through the motions that you've beat that level ten times in the blink of an eye, and that'll give you a bunch of upgrade stuff. And you'll win um, tokens, and those tokens can actually be used to buy Venom's biometrics. So Venom is actually a really easy character to level up now. Ah, oh, sweet man. Um, oh, Flash is a paywall too, by the way. Yeah, I yeah, that's right. Flash is, but Agent Venom is. He's Space Knight Venom first, but his extra costume is Agent Anti Venom. Oh, it's got Space Knight though. Yeah, that's his default oh, costume. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Yeah. And that's one of my most favorite Venom designs. I don't know what it is about that design. I just really, really liked it. That that's refreshing to hear. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean that's that's been Eddie's and I's like go to game, but it, there is I know Eddie didn't want to touch on it, but there is there is fans um, kind of um, speaking up about some changes that are being made to the game, and uh, and rightly so. I and mean, these are fans have been playing like Eddie for six years, so I hope that their voices are heard, and I hope the changes that they are trying to be implemented that I feel like are very um, uh, I don't know the word, but it's like it it's it's I, I'm not a fan of it. It's kind of scummy. And, uh, <laughs> and, 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 Hasht- I, and there's a ha- hashtag boycott MFF. Yeah. Hash. Yeah. You could, you could join the boycott too. But so, so basically people who are boycotting it, they're still playing the game. They're just not buying anything right now, hoping that the, the rules kind of change. And I'm kind of with them. I did, uh, to be honest with you, I did buy absolute carnage. Um, but, uh, but I had, I just wanted him so badly, but, uh, but you can still earn yeah, a character. Yeah, yeah. He's a character, but you can still earn enough crystals to get him his costume without buying it. So there, there is that option too. I'm just, I'm just lazy. Um, so, uh, but, but is there a Gwen a minute? Yeah. Gwen, Gwen, yeah, yeah. yeah. There is a Gwen. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. man, they didn't miss anybody. Wait, wait, wait. Lasher. No, well, the, the, the life no. just scream. No. She's the only life foundation just so scream, far. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, dread face. No dread face and no, no, <laughs> no toxin, no hybrid. None of those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie doesn't even acknowledge Red Face. Hey, man, right? <laughs> uh, not denim either. Um, oh, yeah, no denim. Those Canadians are mixing out there. Yeah, um, but so so speaking of that though, so Carnage, we were just talking about him a second ago. There is actually I didn't know this until like I started doing this Venom vlog show. I think it was Eddie and someone else left these comments in my chat, which was Carnage, not Venom, but Carnage appears as Cletus Cassidy and as Carnage in the amazing spider-man 2 video game um, oh yeah and i had no idea that was a thing but i guess you fight him as carnage in the middle of the game or early on in the game and then he becomes the final boss as carnage which is that blew my mind i was like wow an andrew garfield versus carnage battle uh, and i watched the footage of it and it's actually really neat i thought it was really cool looking do you guys any of you play that game 
Nope. I did. I, did. I played it, and that surprised me. Did you play it, Eddie? I'm sorry. No, no I saw the movie, and that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I hear that the game looks better than the movie, and not that that's a, it, a big... It was super fun. Yeah, not that that's easy, hard to do, but still, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was everything you wanted from a Spider-Man game. You got to see Cletus Cassidy early on in the game, and Eddie Brock, actually. And, uh, um... Yeah, at the end of the game, if you've pretty much completed the main mission, it's like a bonus extra mission. You have to go to uh, Ravencroft. Is it Ravencroft Marble, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's where they're having like this carnage breakout. And one of the doctors actually tells you because Harry took, in the game, Harry took the Venom Serum to become the Green Goblin. Right. And they were working on his antidote and that's how they accidentally created carnage is what you got from one of the doctors in the final mission so that that was kind of a cool little retcon that they were doing there and it was a surprise and boss battle it, it was glorious nice yeah i watched the footage it's, it's pretty neat um and I, I i tried actually to track down that game because it's only previous generation it's like xbox 360 and um and uh, or xbox one and playstation 3 so i tried tracking it down but even to find a copy used online, people are selling it for like eighty bucks and stuff. That's one of those, really. It's yeah. Gone up that high? Yeah, That's people a, like a web of oh. shadows high, man. Yeah, I'm oh. like, what the heck, man? Um, I would have never have guessed. I have it digitally. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're lucky then. Um, and they don't sell it digitally anymore. If you go to the store, it's not there anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's such a. That's that's such a, like, unfair thing that they do with these Spider-Man games. Well, it's because they it's because they license them out. Man. Yeah, it's it's yeah, just all it's licensing. That's why it's good but, that they bought Insomniac now. So anything Insomniac does, Sony can always keep it on their systems, which is good. Um, or at least it's good for us as Spider-Man fans. These games won't go anywhere from Sony now. Um, but uh, there was another nice. game that came out that I'll talk real briefly about. That Venom was in, along with a bunch of other Marvel characters. I don't know if you guys played this, but I was obsessed with it. Uh, which was Disney Infinity. Um, when that game first came out, I didn't care about it because it was just Disney characters. So I was like, eh, whatever. But then when Volume 2 came out, it was the Marvel superheroes. And so, and I saw Venom was part of it. So I went out and you had to buy like, um, you know, you had to buy these little toys and there was like a reader and you had to put on top. It was, I can't remember, there was like a game that came out before that. For Skylanders. The, Skylanders, yeah. So yeah. it was like yep. Skylanders. And so... So and then Lego tried to do a version that didn't really work out for them called Dimensions and Dimensions. Yeah. yeah. Um but the the Disney Infinity one, I saw Venom and I was like, "Oh my god, can I run around as Venom and like eat like Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck?" Like <laughs> like I, and <laughs> that I was your thought. That was my thought was like, "Oh, this is great. I could just like like eat like Buzz Lightyear." I'm like, "This is going to be so much fun." And then I played it and it was like, "Oh, like you can play as Venom." But only in this restricted area called the toy box where you can design your own characters or only in this specific level. And and I was like, ah, oh, man. So it wasn't as like free as I thought it was going to be. Like you just buy a character and play as them anywhere. It wasn't that free of a game. Um, but it was still there, – there's still you still got a lot of Venom play for buying the character. But I played that. I was obsessed with it because it was the only game at the time – that I had that had venom in it that I could play consistently, um, where I was was where I was actually the character. So I didn't know if you guys ever dipped into the Infinity stuff at all. I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah, oh, you did? My, my yeah, my my kids were of the age, so I was like, oh well, there's a venom thing. They gotta have this game. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, they they played it for like I played it too with them for a little bit, and they they got rid of it uh all the we got all of it gone i kept the venom figure from it though yeah i still have like mine a, too like it was like a bootleg minecraft is that what it kind of seemed like yeah because you had to like design your own areas sometimes and they give you stupid tasks and yeah it was it was pretty mindless fun at some times but there wasn't re there was kind of a story to it but not really and uh but it was just kind of fun just being venom and running around New York, Marvel, New York, and just like smashing things sometimes. And I, don't know, I, I got a kick out of it for what it was, but it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Which, of course, of course, Disney's not going to release a game where Venom eats all their star characters. 
but I guess I was just hoping. <laughs> I was just hoping maybe, like, <laughs> uh, but I didn't get my wish. Cause chaos. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I wanted to eat like Mickey Mouse right in front of Minnie Mouse and make her cry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I didn't get my wish. Maybe one day. Um, but you know, to to kind of start nearing the end of this episode, because uh, I know it's been a long one. So thank you guys for for tuning in. I hope you guys have been enjoying it. And uh, this, you know, so in his most recent appearance, because obviously we had the, a lot of mobile games we talked about, and you can still play the Marvel Future Fight now and Strike Force now and all that. Um, you can get all those characters and play them as of the recording this episode in the year twenty twenty. But then we also last year had the Spider Man PS four video game, which introduced kind of a version of Venom that a lot of people aren't a fan of because they've done it in the cartoons and stuff before, which is where they try to lean it toward more towards Harry Osborn being a version of Venom. Um, but they still, in the same game, mention that Eddie Brock exists. So there's there's a chance that maybe, you know, the suit will leave Harry and end up on Eddie at some point in the next game. Um, but, uh, but, you know, that's kind of our current state status on console games is that might be the version of Venom we have moving forward. So I'm kind of curious, what are your thoughts of that? And, you know, wh what do you hope for the future is for Venom in video games? And, and we'll start with Leith Null first, and we'll jump over to Eddie. All right. Uh, you know, they did such a good job with that story. They, I swear, I shed a tear at the end of that game. Um, I So much love is there for me. And I will take any new reinventing way they're going to tell the story uh i'm just beyond stoked that they actually included venom in this game i thought for sure we were going to have him in a different way with mr negative being in it and feast and all that i thought they were going to totally 180 us but nope we got it in a little bit more of a subtle way and i'm all on board it 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 blew me away and i can only you know wait to see what's going to come next Nice. All right. So you're you're kind of on board with that version of Venom, um, and so Eddie, yes, Eddie, I'm kind of curious. Wh what's your thoughts on that? And if you're not a fan of it, what do you hope to see in in a future video game with Venom in it? Yeah. Well, I didn't uh, have a PlayStation, and I saw that game coming out, and I saw the footage. I was like getting ready to go get it, and then I started. So then. I watched like a review or something or a teaser or something. I saw some, there was like a spoiler about Venom. So I watched the scene and I see where it shows Harry floating in a vat with Venom stuff and Norman outside of it. And I saw it and I said, nope, I ain't, I ain't buying it. <laughs> <laughs> Not my Venom. <laughs> I, will, I refuse. I won't play it. I don't care. <laughs> ah, fair enough. Uh, so, they, they had, dude, yeah, that's very fair, man. I understand it. PlayStation. I was going to go for it. And I said, nope don't care so so having said that and now with the success of the movie what do you hope then instead of that or on top of that version what do you hope where do you hope to see venom outside of that universe in the future in video games i would love to see him get a game i think and sell i it, they, they slap the symbiote on stuff and it sells like crazy i i don't know why they haven't done it yet yeah yeah i you know we, here, man were you the same lethal yeah, yeah, same here. I'm sorry. That's it. Just makes too much sense, right? They're selling everything else. Why not a video game? It's true. I mean, like I, I think about a lot. Like, uh, you know, I, I've been, I've been thinking about Maximum Venom this season. Just to derail a second, and I've been thinking how Eddie was not used in that season, and I'm like, what would make them not use Eddie in a current iteration of the show besides just trying to do something different? And I thought, oh, I wonder if there's a company mandate to not use them, and if so, what what does that mean for the character? Like, what el what are they gonna what are they planning for him? And after the success of that movie and the fact that it's launching a Sony shared universe franchise, and it puts Sony into better negotiations with Marvel to get Spider-Man to interact with Venom when they want to use it, the fact that that one movie did all of that for them. I have no doubt in my mind that much like Warner Brothers did when Batman kind of saved their studio back in the 80s, Sony's looking at Venom as like a, a prime real estate and that they want to expand on. So I'm hoping we get a Venom cartoon and I definitely hope we get a Venom video game because like you said, it's beyond time. And think about a Venom video game on the level of something like the current Spider-Man games, if it's Eddie Brock as Venom, the anti-hero-ness of it. Like, 
it's almost like Grand Theft Auto. You can run around and do like Ultimate Spider-Man. You can run around and eat people. You can save people. You can choose in the story if Eddie's going to do the right thing or the wrong thing. You can throw in other Marvel characters in there like Punisher and you know things that you can't normally put in a Spider-Man game. And you can have Carnage in there. It's like there's so much you can do with it. And I, I agree. I don't know why they're sitting on it because to me I'm like yeah do your Harry Osborn Venom in your Insomniac game and develop a whole new Eddie Brock game and that's what I want to see too and what if they did a spinoff from that universe though with this Venom video game see, and that's I think that's exactly what you're talking about yeah I mean I'd be okay with that too if, wow. they, if, if in the next wow. game if in the next game they have like Harry you know, you fight Harry as Venom and the suit leaves him and it, it goes on that universe's version of Eddie. And then much like Miles got his own game this time, if they were like, hey, we're going to give Eddie now as Venom his own game next time. Yeah, dude, I would I would be into that too. I, whether it's a, a same universe or different universe, I'd be into it too. Heck yeah, man. And buy a PlayStation finally. <laughs> <laughs> finally, years later, years later. I've never owned one. Never. See, the thing is, Venom's yeah, such a brand. Be. It's such a brand now, yeah. Venom. So it's like, I, I don't know. Like To me, I'm like, I, I kind of have one of those corporate mentalities where, oh, it made money. So it's like, all right, let's make Venom t-shirts and lunch boxes and you know, water bottles. And, and if you go to the Disney shop right now on their website, uh, shopdisney.com, you'll see all of that stuff. Lunch boxes, backpacks, t-shirts, water bottles with just Venom on them. And they say, we are Venom. And I'm like, this is... The, for us Venom fans, it's like the best time in the world to be a Venom fan. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's funny. You know, it doesn't surprise me with Disney. You know, they've done worse in the past and they put it as cartoons and whatnot, you know, like with innuendos, but now they got a comic book character that killed is all over their Disney store. We are Venom, <laughs> love me. And it's just you know, He's like he's like killed and terrorized women and stuff, and it's like it's like and they're just like, yay, buy his shirt today. <laughs> he says, "Isn't he cute? Look at him." Yeah, it's so amazing, <laughs> and he put it on your baby. And he does. He looks he looks scary on all of them. They didn't use like kid friendly artwork either. They like he looks menacing on all of those shirts and lunchbox. I'm like, this is so awesome. Like I I love it. it's it's just like a paradise. I almost wish I had a kid. Oh, I have a, a nephew. I guess I could throw a bunch of venom stuff at him. Um, but uh, but yeah, almost. If I had a kid right now, he would just be head to toe with Venom shoes and Venom shirts, going to school and stuff. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I did order like, the newest uh, Venom Disney hat from there. It has like a new type of font that they're using. It's like graffiti. I saw it. It's nice. It's yeah. That, the it's trucker a hat. Nice hat. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's a cool trucker hat. It's nice. It's black and white. It's really cool looking. Um, yeah, they got like eight different colors of it too on there. Nice. Um, so everyone who has been listening to the show since episode one, or if you came on board throughout the journey like these two guys did, um, it's great to celebrate a 600 episode wrap up a fourth season and to share it with you guys who have a passion for the character like I do, um, who love video games like I do. And it's so cool because, I mean, I do video game stuff too, but when I put it on this channel, nobody likes it or watches it. So I have my own channel for video games, but it's nice that we could have dedicated this whole like hour, hour and a half long episode just to Venom in video games. So before we wrap up, any last thoughts, any last comments you guys would like to make, well, you know, make about the his history in video games? Uh, I'd love you guys to, if you have anything, go ahead and say them now. Lethal, we'll start with you and then we'll jump over to Eddie again. Uh, yeah, there was a couple surprises that I found making this list. Um, dude, there was a Marvel Powers United VR game yeah. that had Venom as a mini boss. So you fought Venom in VR, throwing tentacles and stuff at you. <laughs> and I didn't. I don't have an Oculus Rift. That's what it came out for. But damn, does it make me want to get one? It looks stunning. And then also there was one other. You know, noticeable mention was uh, the Pinball FX Venom level. Did you guys play that? Yes, I have. On stream before, too. I, I saw it. It looks really good. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, the, the whole uh, tabletop was fantastic. You almost got a chance to see every uh, symbiote on that tabletop. It, it was glorious. It's cool. Those two games were surprises to me, though. Yeah, the Pinball one I played on stream, and you can, like, you can literally... Um, unlock carnage like he jumps like if you hit a certain area a couple times he is set free and then you go into the the scene and it's like it replays his origin where you're in a jail cell 
and it's really awesome. Like that that pinball game is so cool. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. It's it's really and you can buy it for like five bucks on your PlayStation. It's great. Oh sweet. Um, what about you, Eddie? Yeah. That was it. it oh. was just, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it, I, I, I was surprised. I mean, I guess I, I, a lot of these uh, I'd forgotten about uh, that I even played. But, uh, yeah, like, there's a lot of neat ones out there. There's a lot of videos on YouTube, too, that you can go watch playthroughs or commentary on these. I've, that's what I did to kind of dust up on some of the, the old games that I had played. Uh, yeah, I, it's surprising. It doesn't, I mean, it, I mean, it it is surprising when you look back at it, but it's not surprising that it sells because he's, he's sold on merchandise for years, you know, and it's just a matter of them pushing the material and it's only a, it's a matter of time. They, they, they're going to have to put something out for him. I'm just, I just look forward to that. Me too. And I, I hope, uh, I, you know, I'm sure if anyone at Sony was listening to this, they're probably like, it's on in the background. So if you're, if you're not paying attention right now, pay attention. We need a Venom video game. Get your ass to work and make it happen. Um, and yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't have anything much to say. I mean, just, you know, re-release friend or foe, you hacks and, uh, <laughs> shadows. yeah, Web, yeah, really re-release that for sure. Um, you know, those, those were just really fun games. Web of Shadows is awesome. And if you get your hands on any of the games we talked about, or if you have a favorite out there, you know, that we didn't discuss or we didn't talk about enough for you, let us know what those are in the comments down below. And, of course, we'll all jump down there when we get time and we'll uh, reply to you and, uh, you know, and everything. Because I, I, that's the thing about this show is, you know, we, we love hearing other people's opinions. And so please give us uh, your thoughts as well. And, again, thank you all for, um, you know, celebrating 600 episodes with us. Thank you, too, for making time. Eddie, I know it's it's not easy for you where you are, but the fact that you made time to be here and also Leekno for – you know, asking if Eddie could be here because it, it's nice to have you back on the show and have all three of us just nerding out over something we love so much. Um, so thank you guys again. Everyone, links to all their stuff down below in the comment section or in the description box. Um, let us know what you think, though, in the comment section of this episode. And now we've covered all the Venom games, everything that I wanted to. Screen Rant, your hacks. Uh, we did, we covered a lot more <laughs> games than you brought up. Um and uh you know and everyone out there like you know you know hopefully you know season five will start soon we'll get back into like peter parker the time he was uh in the black suit we'll get into the mike costa run of venom we'll wrap up any last remaining flash thompson stuff we have another carnage week we got to do and obviously a lot of movie news for venom let there be carnage we'll be discussing as well so we got we're not going anywhere the venom vlog is sticking around and we're going to keep going until we hit a thousand episodes or more so thank you guys so much as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff we'll see you in the future Peace. Peace. <laughs> Surf the web. Surf the web. <laughs> <laughs>